Hello, students of STEM. This is Tiffany Hallman again from the American Heart Association. And today for our um, mentor moments, I have two women that are from 8451. So Priya, why don't you start first and introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Tiffany. My name is Priya Modi and I'm a data scientist here at 8451. Um, through my work, I lead strategies around targeting and measurement for media, our campaigns that we run specifically for Kroger Personal Finance. So think of anything that falls under like credit card, gift cards, money services, lottery, and so forth. So yeah, that's wow. my role. Nice. And Amber? Yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Amber Martini. Um, I'm also a data scientist at 8451. I've been there for just going on three years, I think, something like that. Um, and I'm on the commercial insights team. Um, so what that kind of means is I work with a lot of the companies that sell products at Kroger to help them better understand their customers, their products, and kind of how they work in our store. Um, so think things like Kraft and Kellogg's um, and all of those companies that sell all these products at our stores. Um, I do a lot of custom projects for them, as well as just building out products to help them. Um, oh, wow. Them better. Very cool. Now, um, have you both um, always worked at 8451 or have you had other roles and, and what have those been? Yeah, so I've always worked at 8451. I've been here for about two years now. Um, but so this is my first full time role. But prior to this role, I've interned in a bunch of different industries. So through that um, avenue, I was able to learn what I liked, disliked, and just get um, a more holistic exposure of statistics and its different applications in the industries. Very cool. How about you, Amber? Yeah, and similar story for me. So this is my first full time role. Um, but prior to this, I did intern as an actuarial intern. Um, my major in college is actually actuarial science before I found my love of data science. Um, it's a little bit different, but I interned there for a full two years um, at a health insurance company, thinking that that was what I wanted to do um, before I learned that that was not what I wanted. Um, yeah. Here. <laughs> That's so interesting because um, I was kind of the same way. I went to school to be a teacher, and lots of times you don't do your internship until the end of your college career. And um, I was like, you know, I realized I didn't really necessarily want to go in that field, but I had already, you know, it's my senior year. And so um, internships are so important. And I really encourage the, the girls who are listening to explore internships right away in their college career and not wait until it's kind of like required as a course um, requirement. Do it in the beginning. Um, you're, you know, straight out of your freshman year of college start doing some internships because that really gives you a true picture of um, the field that you're going into. So where did you ladies go to college at? Sorry, I was trying to unmute, but um, I went to University of Florida for undergrad and I studied math and statistics there. Um, and then I went to Carnegie Mellon for my master's where I did my master's in statistics. So my undergraduate degrees were super theoretical um, and I really wanted more of like an application perspective. I wanted more programming. I wanted to build a better foundation of how to apply these like mathematical and statistical theories. So that's why I decided to pursue my master's and in statistics at Carnegie Mellon. Wow, that's great. How about you, Amber? And then I went to Ohio State um, for my undergrad. I got, like I said, a bachelor's in actuarial science because that's what I always thought I was going to do. Um, but luckily, I did get minors in economics and statistics, which is really where I started to take some more coding classes and just like threw a couple extra coding classes in on the side and started to realize that that was what I really liked. It wasn't just the math side of things, but it was also like the coding and like logical side of things. Um, and that's kind of where I realized that while actuarial was interesting, very math heavy, data science was more creative. Um, and I feel like that was how I figured out what I really wanted to do. Finally, my senior year of college. Um, yeah. So yeah. There. So it sounds like you both had passions for math um, in high school. Is that correct? You all really loved math and knew that was kind of where your success was? 
Yeah, it was kind of, um, when I was in high school, I was like, oh, I love math, but I don't really know what to do with it. I was either going to be a teacher or I was going to be an actuary. Like those were the two options that were kind of presented to me at the time of like, this is what people that like math go into. Um, and I didn't know there were so many other options and just like similar things where like it touches that part of your brain that you like, but doesn't necessarily have to be like just these two options. There are so many things you can do. Yeah. I had a similar experience as well, where in um, high school and in college, I didn't really know what I want to major in or what I want to pursue my career in, but I knew I really loved math. So I just kept taking math courses and then finding internships that leveraged um, math or logical reasoning or anything of that sort, and then kind of discovered my love for data science. That's awesome. And I think, um, I think you guys are inspiring because, um, you know, we think about kind of what Amber said with girls um, at school. Well, first of all, it's, you know, not normal for girls to love math, you know, and so um, it, it doesn't surprise me, Amber, that you had people say, well, these are your options. And so that's what's so awesome about um, learning more about STEM and, and having conversations with women like you, because both of you, um, because they're our girls are getting a chance to to learn and, and hear that there's you know you can have a love for math and it doesn't mean you just have to teach math or you know there's all these different options so I love hearing that that both of you knew in high school this is this is what I love I love math and then you went into college and explored your options um that's so cool and um I think that it's exciting for the girls watching because I know there's a lot of a lot of girls that do love math and, and your two occupations are something that's probably things that you even think about. Um, so I love that. Okay, so kind of switching things up a little bit for more some some more fun conversations. So um, like what do you guys like to watch? Like let me hear a little bit more about you. Like what's your favorite it TV show right now? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that one. Let's see. What am I watching right now? Well, Bridgerton just dropped. So that is okay. my like, one TV show that I'm yeah. watching now. <laughs> um, so that one's fun. And then I just finished watching Inventing Anna on Netflix as well, which was just like so interesting watching um, this woman that like came from nothing, but somehow managed to kind of steam her way. Yeah. It was very interesting to see. Very cool. So I'm really bad at watching TV shows because I lose interest relatively quickly. Yeah. But the last show I watched and I loved was Emily in Paris. Um, oh my I just gosh. see you guys a data scientist that lives in Chicago and the main character also is from Chicago. So I loved that little um, element. Hilarious. <laughs> I just started watching that show. Um, oh my God, just started season two last night. And the thing I like about it is she's like fearless. Like she, I'm thinking... If I was, I don't know how old she is in the show, but maybe she's like 25, I feel like I probably wouldn't have been as fearless as her. And so I love, that's what I really love about that show is that she's just like, I'm not afraid. And she just stands her ground and, and um, isn't, a, isn't afraid to speak her mind and, and make mistakes. And I don't know, I just, that's what I really, I like about that show too. That's funny. Um, are, are you guys reading any good books right now? I've been reading a decent amount. I've had a lot of fiction right now. So I just okay. have up my like book stack over here. Yeah. This is the one I finished over the weekend in five years. Pretty oh. short to read, um, but it was very good. Oh, cool. I'm also um, reading a lot of fiction right now. And the book I'm currently reading is Circe. It falls in like the Greek mythology um, genre. And I really yeah. love it because the main protagonist is like a very strong female um like woman who's just kind of going against or like kind of challenging a lot of the like challenges that are faced her way so I really like how she's portrayed in the book yeah that's awesome I I'm kind of a sucker for some for some fiction books too it's just like kind of gets like an escape and I can just read and yeah totally with you I mean it's nice that I, I do love my nonfiction where I'm like learning but sometimes it's just like my dirty pleasure just to like read a good not a, a good uh, fiction book so I hear it, both of you for sure okay so we're doing in STEM um, a mentor program where 
some of our girls are mentoring up um, with uh, women who are in the STEM field. So I just kind of wanted to see, do either one of you all have mentors or have you had mentors throughout your co collegiate career or now as a professional? Um, and, and what does that mean to you, um, having a mentor and how, what do you think about the importance of that? Yeah, um, I think mentors have been a really important part of my professional career, both like in college and now. Um, one of my mentors is actually kind of sort of the reason I'm here, um, where I had someone in college that was kind of someone that helped with one of our student organizations that I helped lead. So they were kind of some mentor for that, but they also happened to be a data scientist at 8451. Oh, cool. And I was trying to switch and figure out, like, I don't really love actuarial science. It's, I, it's not something that I'm like super passionate about. So I, I, I want to find something that I am passionate about. Um, he kind of talked me through his role, his job, um, and why he really liked working here. And I ended up here a few months later. Um, so I'm just like peer mentoring where it started in one place, but like peer mentors can evolve and change and like be different things for you. Um, so that was how it kind of started. Then at 8451, Priya and I are both co-leads of our Women in Tech group, which has a very Ooh. focused peer mentoring program. Um, which I have gotten so much value out of in the last three years that I've been here. Um, I've probably had somewhere between eight and 10 different mentors over the last three years. And I learned so many different things from every single person that I've been paired with, um, where we're kind of mentors for each other. Um, and I just think it's a really cool program and someone to go to when I am really excited about something or when I'm really like scared about something. Um, it's a good just backboard of someone that's going to understand. I love that. Yeah, I have a similar story to Amber. Um, well, I guess I can just by saying that I've also been in like the, sh like the shoes of being a mentor, but also have been mentored by many people. And I will say that the reason why I'm at my, my current role or even the fact that like I have my master's is because of the um, sounding board and like the advice and the relationship I've been able to form through different mentors. Like, for example, one of my mentors um, works at a different company, but she was able to guide me as to like, you know, should I get my master's? What should I pursue my master's in? And just kind of be like, like I said, like a sounding board for some of the like, questions and decisions I was struggling to make. And then also um, when I interned first at my current company, 8451, um, my lead, like project lead, um, he, he acted as a mentor for me that summer and then now it's kind of come full circle we both work on the same team and he's still like a mentor to me but that um, evolution of that mentorship has changed where it's more of like peer mentorship now and it's just a way that we can really like um, continue to grow our relationship and learn from each other. I love that and you both kind of um, mentioned that so much we to the the peer mentor side so much we think of mentors as someone that's older and wiser but it's good to have different kinds of mentors um i have women in mentors i have men that are mentors and i have peers that are mentors and i think that's um important to think about you know surrounding yourself with strong um peers that you trust and that you can bounce ideas off of or that you have um you know you know, you, you believe in them too, and they believe in you. I think that that's so important. And so I love the fact that you both kind of talked about the peer mentor piece. Um, and, you know, you're so right. Both of you mentioned having the mentor has really given you the, the ideas and the strength to kind of move forward and, and figure out what you want to do in your, in your professional career. And so having a mentor is something that, um, and kind of like Amber said, she's had many different mentors through the program at 8451, but you know, you'll have many mentors um, in different stages of your life, um, personally and professionally. And so I just, I really love um, what both of you all said. And, and I think you'll continue to have more as you continue to grow in your profession. So that's awesome. All right. And then the last kind of question that I have um, is uh, kind of a tricky one that, to, to answer because I feel like um, it's kind of the same thing. It's something that develops and um, things that I, something that I still work on, you know, as a woman that's 40 is, um, you know, where do you get your confidence? You know, especially being newer in, the pre in your profession. And I can remember when I first started 
um, straight out of college, being, um, you know, being scared, working with women that and, and men that were more seasoned and trying to gain my voice in a room. Um, so what, what brings you confidence and what are some tips that you do to, to get yourself out there and, and, and gain that confidence? I can go first. <laughs> yeah. a tricky question and one that I'm definitely like thinking about as I'm answering it, but yeah. confidence is not something that like I'm going to say I've always had because I absolutely have not and sometimes don't still. I mean, that is something yeah. that I'm still constantly working on. Um, but I do know that when I started at the company, you're just surrounded by so many smart people. And when you're new somewhere, you sometimes just feel like why am I here? Or like, I don't deserve to be here. Or like, these people are so much smarter than me. Um, because like, everyone here is super smart. But you start to realize over time and start to like, appreciate what like, you are special for and like, why you are here. Like, you are here for a reason. And that is something like, I had to keep telling myself when I started, because I felt like I just didn't have the skills that everyone else had. And like, why am I not as good of a coder as everyone else? Like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? But sometimes I would forget that there are things that I'm really good at that not everyone else is good at too. Um, and like maybe other people are seeing you that way too and you don't even think about it because that's just not your perspective. Um, so a lot of times it's just taking a second to step back if I'm feeling overwhelmed of like, okay, let's go through your like your brags. Like, what are you good at? Like remind yourself of what you're good at and say like, this is why I'm here. This is why they're giving me this project, this task, putting me on this team. Um, and going through that exercise just like helps me ground myself and feel a little bit less overwhelmed if I'm feeling like less confident in something. Um, so either that or going to that network of peer mentors that I have and saying like, hey, I'm worried about this. Like, I need you to either be nervous with me or hype me up or like make sure I'm excited. Like, tell me why this is a good thing. Um, you have different peer mentors for different reasons, usually and different mentors. Or like when you need that person to really hype you up, like this is who I go to. Or if I'm really concerned about something, this is who I go to. Um, so just always feeling like you can go to people with questions or concerns and you don't have to go through all of it yourself. Um, it's good to have people to lean on. I love that. Yeah, I think Amber really summed up my thoughts as well. But, um, you know, a common theme, especially when I first joined the company, um, has been like, you know, when those doubts or those feelings of like, hey, maybe I'm not adequate enough or um, just kind of doubting my abilities and having like the imposter syndrome like tendencies, I just really remind myself that, hey, I was hired for a reason, that they saw something in me and that's maybe something that I can deliver, but maybe someone else can't. So really just like highlighting your own abilities and then thinking through that, like, hey, you were here for a reason and um, you belong here. And then also really surrounding yourself by um, people that support you, whether it's your mentors, whether it's family or friends, and really leveraging that network of people that really want to see you grow and develop. That's a huge place for me to kind of also get my um, confidence from. And then also just like finding in the day-to-day -day, um, moments, like taking a step back and finding little strategies that can help you with the confidence aspect. Um, whether it's like listening to music or like watching certain videos or, um, you know, talking to like your mentor again, things like that. It's kind of where some of the daily um, things come from. And to Amber's point, also thinking through like, like your brags, like can you make a brag book or like a, like a kind of sheet where you document your wins, like on a weekly basis, or monthly basis. And that will always serve as a positive affirmation or reminder of um, that you're worthy and that you belong here. Yeah, I love that, Priya. And, you know, you both are so right. Um, um, I love that you both said, you know, I'm here for a reason. And, you know, you do reflect on, wow, there's so many amazing people here, but you were chosen to be here too. So you're amazing. And I hadn't, I haven't really heard of the brag um, when Amber brought it up and then Priya did too. I hadn't really heard of like the brag um, word before or idea. And, but that's so true. Like if you, I, I'm a lister too, so I list like pros and cons. So it's kind of like pros and cons, but really just having the pros. And I think that's a good thing to kind of run through your head. Um, it's kind of like that old Saturday Night Live skit where like, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and people like me, you know? Um, and I think that that's so true. And just kind of taking a step back and 
I love that you both talked about as well, um, again, surrounding yourself with mentors or friends, family that just cheer you on. That's so important, um, not only to build confidence, but just in life, you know, making sure that you surround yourself with people that are rooting you on and that are there for you. So such, such good advice. I really enjoyed speaking with you all today. And I think um, what made this, this mentor moment really awesome is that you all are fresh out of grad school and, and college and really um, relate so much to the, to the girls who are watching because you are them in a few years. And um, you guys are awesome. Just a little bit, I've had a chance to, to talk with you. And um, I think that's really inspiring for the girls watching. And so thank you so much for taking some time today and speaking with me. And, um, you know, glad the girls had a chance to hear more about 8451 and, and what you all are doing in STEM. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us.